Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the lecture for week four, module three. I'm really bad with those numbers, apparently. So um, this week, I'm going to try and keep it short because I realize that it takes longer to transcode and then upload the longer that the video is. So I'm going to get right to it. First things first, great talking points this week. Again, you guys knocked it out of the park. Um, this has been some really great conversation, especially talking about fallacies and talking about um, your concerns when it comes to um, preparing, obviously preparing to collaborate, but talking about creating a discussion plan, etc. Great comments, great conversations, good job all around. So first things first. Owen brought up a really great point um, when he talked about his concern about repeating information at the end um, to at the end of a, of a discussion, a group discussion when it comes to or because it, it making sure that everybody knows that you're all everybody has the same information. So repeating the information can sometimes take up a lot of time. And can be unnecessary. So I, what I wanted to say to that is that sometimes that is true, but it is better not to assume that everybody knows what you're talking about than to um, assume that everybody knows what you're talking about. So at the end of a conversation, it's better to say, it, it may be better to frame it in a way where you're saying, um, so just want to make sure that everybody knows we're all on the same page. This is what we have covered. Everybody knows that this is the information that we've discussed. This is the information we've collected. Um, I know that I do this all the time with students I work with at Southern New Hampshire University. At the end of a conversation or at the end of a phone call, I will say, just to recap, this is what we've talked about. This is These are the tasks that I'm going to complete by the next time that we talk. These are the tasks, tasks that you're going to complete the, by the next time we talk. And that way we're on the same page. We know where everybody's at. But it doesn't take too much time, and it's not like, oh, this is all the information we have. We're going to say it again just because we have to say it again. There's a reason why we say things more than once. So that's one of the first thing that I wanted to point out. Great point, though, Owen. You just don't want to make – I think your concern was you don't want to make people feel stupid by saying this is the information that you have said and that we all know is accurate – which totally makes sense or, you know, the wasting time aspect of it. But from the perspective of communication, a way to frame that is just so everybody knows we're on the same page. This is what I'm hearing. This is what I've been assigned. This is what you've been assigned. So everybody knows what we're talking about. So I think that that's really what the book is talking about. All right. Next, we're going to talk about fallacies. Um... Mary had a link to a Simpsons clip that was really, really great. It was a great example of a, a hasty or causal fallacy. It was really funny. So I would highly recommend everybody take a look at, at Mary Leonard's um, talking points for the week. I might even actually post them in the amount, announcement section. Um, Sabrina and Nancy brought up the fact that, um, well, Nancy noted that in her critical inquiry class, they covered a bunch of, of fallacies as well. She listed them out. Um, what I wanted to point out was that a lot of the ones that she was saying was were different from the ones that were in this book are actually the same thing, just with different names. So another, um, I think April brought up that there were uh, a lot of, there are a lot of fallacies that weren't brought up in the book at all, which what I want you want to caution you with is that it, there are a lot of different types of fallacies. Um, the point isn't so much that there are an X number type of fallacy. It's the logic is bad. So the important thing is that you understand to look for the flaws in the logic, you know, to ask, are there are the facts or the assumptions that the logic is based on? Are those accurate? Where are they coming from? Are they uh, reasonable? Can you back it up with a reasonable analysis or fa the facts? Like the book talks about, you know, facts, opinions, predictions, um, etc. So that's what I would like you to remember is that there are different types of fallacies. A lot of them have, you know, it's the same thing with different names. Uh, like in the book, it calls it a bandwagon fallacy where everybody gets on, you know, this is the way it's supposed to be because everybody says it's the way it's supposed to be. I think Nancy brought up that it, under her critical inquiry class, it was called a ad populum, which is really just Latin for popular opinion. So um, 
just remember that that's, and then there's the converse is true, you know, everybody's saying it, but I'm going to go against it because everybody's saying it. Well, that's a fallacy as well. You have to base it with assumptions and facts and statistics, etc. Um, all right. Next, uh, Sabrina was also mentioning those um, other types of fallacies from, also, I think, from her critical inquiry class as well. Next, Caitlin brought up that she'd never heard of a syllogism. Um, Caitlin and Sean also brought up that they'd never heard of the word syllogism before, which is really exciting that you got a new word, new vocabulary. That's always exciting. I love how they use keywords that everybody knows what those mean. Like, okay, guys, that does not really add to anything. But syllogism is a great keyword, a great new vocabulary word. Um, one way to think of a syllogism is it is based on major premise, minor premise, conclusion. Another way to think of it is as an if-then statement. Um, so, for example, if all men are mortal, major premise, and Socrates is a man, more concise or precise premise, then Socrates is mortal, conclusion. So that's a very simplified way of putting a syllogism if, if it is an if-then statement. There's a lot of different other other types of syllogisms, but the whole point is that a syllogism is a, a form of logic. You can also look up, um, if anybody wants to do extra research, don't have to, um, symbolic logic is another way of framing um, those sorts of, log so, sorts of logical um, uh, arguments, sorry. Um, so you use, it, it looks like math because it'll be like A plus B equals C, where A means if all men are mortal, B equals, and Socrates is a man, C equals all men are, or Socrates is mortal. Um, it's a way of organizing thoughts. So take a look at it online. Wikipedia is a great resource. So check it out. It's very interesting. All right, let's see what's next. Um... This is a really great question. April, in a response to Megan's response to Brian's talking point, uh, brought up the difference between biases and beliefs and the role that they can play in a lot of situations. And um, I think Kim asked, also asked what, what the difference, how to pinpoint the difference between a value and a belief. So these two questions kind of go together. So talking to Kim's question first, when it comes to looking at the difference between a value and a belief, a value is something that, I'm trying to explain that without using the word value in the sentence. Um, so a value is like a, a characteristic that you put a lot of emphasis on, something that you um, really value. <laughs> Hate to do that, um, but it's a characteristic. Whereas a belief is uh, looking at different, like um, something that could be a, could be factual. There's not so much the uh, support to make it factual, but a belief system or a belief is a something that you are you don't have all the the information to make a, a concrete yes or no answer or decision on something, whereas the a value is more looking at a characteristic. So how about, how about this? You can value faith, but you believe in a higher power, or you believe in the goodness of people. You value being good to other people, but you believe that most people are just good by nature. That would be an example of the difference between a value and a belief. April, you brought up a great question about identifying the differences between biases and beliefs. And that's a very, very difficult question, um, especially when talking about um, walking on eggshells with people with specific beliefs. And I honestly don't have a very good answer for this, but it is something to think about. When our beliefs, biases, it takes a lot of introspection to say, okay, well, this is something I believe. I think I, 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 know, I know what I want to say. So a biases is when you believe what your belief is 
to the exclusion of all other forces, sources of information. So someone who is biased, I'm going to use racism as an example. So someone who is a racist, right, they are biased against a race. Whereas if, if they were to think about it, right, their belief is that this race is, this other race is subpar, not, not equal with them, right? They are biased because they don't accept that there are other ways of believing about race. I hope that makes sense. Audrey, does that make sense? I don't know if you guys can hear her, but she said yes, that it makes sense. So I'm going to go with that. If anybody has any questions, let me know. But my point is, is that the belief is, having a belief is not in and of itself wrong. It's when you don't allow the belief you don't allow, you don't recognize where the belief comes from and you don't recognize that other people might have different beliefs. That's what I'm going to go with. Audrey said that's a good answer. She's my sister, just so everybody knows. So, and she's really smart. So I'm going to go, also she's a psychologist. So I'm going to go with what she says. <laughs> As she's laughing at me, which you can't hear. Okay. So moving on to... Um, excellent. So I uh, just want to point out, Shelby asked if anybody had ever served on a jury and N Nancy did or has served on a civil, a civil, um, a jury for a civil case. Everybody should go and read that. It was really interesting. You don't have to comment or anything, but I just thought it was really interesting. Wanted to point it out. And Chelsea responded to Mariah about the importance of having fun as a group. So I wanted to bring that up as like a question. So how important is it for a group to have fun? How important is it for a group to be fun? And does having fun impact efficiency and productivity? Is there a fine line? And I would say that there is. Um, but that kind of goes back to preparing the whole preparing to collaborate, having a discussion plan. And if you lay out 10 minutes at the beginning of a session or a group meeting to do something fun, do those icebreakers, then absolutely that makes sense. But you have to remember to stay on task and have the ability to stay on task. So I just thought it was a really great point and I wanted to put it out. And last but not least, Kylie had a point um, or referred to a part in the book about being able to rely on fact-based opinions of unbiased authorities. My question for all of you is, how do you discern if the opinions of someone are actually fact-based? And uh, B, if the authorities are unbiased? One of the ways that I want you to think about this is actually our legal system. Our legal system is based on precedent, so our laws actually are derived from previous cases and the decisions that judges have made on those previous cases. That's a primary source of law. A secondary source of law, which is not used very often, but it is, it can be referred to when a, a judge makes a, an opinion, is the opinion written in a law journal not in a legal, like, like not in a case, um, of a legal scholar. That is considered or can be used as a source of law when it comes to deciding a, a, a case. What do you think about that? Do you think that's appropriate? Do you think that that is um, a, a good way of deriving our source of law? Or do you not agree? What are your thoughts? I'm going to write this in the actual thing as well, or um, the box describing the video. I look forward to your opinions. Um, all right, so I think that that's it for now. If anybody has any questions, I look forward to it. Otherwise, I will talk to you guys next week. Thanks. Bye.